This video is a continuation of the previous video, learning about functions in chapter eight of the book Crash Course, Python Crash Course by Eric Mathis from No Starch Press. So in the previous video, we're learning just the basics of uh, writing functions, calling functions, passing arguments to functions. And then he does something interesting in the chapter and he writes a function that looks something like this. So defining a function, this function is named make burgers, and then you've got the argument here, toppings, and then we're going to print toppings, okay? And then notice the asterisk here. So in the chapter, he states that the asterisk will allow an arbitrary number of arguments to be passed in, in and it'll create a tuple. So you can see here, I've got print toppings. I wanna to see what the toppings are that get passed in through the argument. And then I'm printing, and then I want to see the type of toppings, like what are toppings. So then you've got make burgers here, tomatoes. And then I did a control B here on my keyboard, and it ran the program. And you can see here, tomatoes gets printed, and then the class is tuple. And sure enough, the argument is coming in as a tuple. So you could do that again, and we could say, all right, tomatoes, and then we'll say, um, onions, and then maybe something like cheese. All right, and then do control B, and you can see there tomatoes, onions, cheese, and it's a tuple. So that's pretty interesting. An arbitrary number of items, which we could put in there, it looks like I'm passing three arguments into the function by calling the function here and, and putting in tomatoes, onions, and cheese, but you can see here asterisk toppings creates just an arbitrary number of items that go into a tuple. And a tuple is a little bit like a list, except what's the difference? A tuple is unchangeable. You can't change the tuple. You can just have to rewrite it and redefine it. All right, so in the next one, he uses two arguments and he does something like this. He says, okay, we'll pass in size and then the toppings. So this will take in an argument and then it'll take in the toppings. And, and then you could use it in a situation like this. Say something like maybe an F string. Uh, let's like that, an F string. And we'll put a new line making a see here then we'll put in size in between curly braces to pass in our argument with the following toppings and then we'll put in here in between toppings something like that okay and we could actually loop through those toppings so we'll say is we'll put this here and in the book he does this and then he just loops through the toppings. So we'll go here. So making a blank burger with the following toppings. Notice we pass in this argument and then in the next tab over here and say for topping in toppings. We'll do a little loop here and then print with an F string our toppings, something like that. Okay, and he puts in a little dash here, and that looks good. Okay, so now we call make burgers, and we would say something like this. Um, we want a single burger. Whoops, we need double quotes here. And then tomatoes, onions, and cheese. And we'll see here if that works. Let's see if that works. So. The argument size is a single, and then the toppings goes here, and there should be an arbitrary number. So let's see if that works. Control B, and it says, making a single burger with the following toppings, tomatoes, onions, and cheese. And let's see here. Um, actually, I did it wrong, because in the print statement here, I printed out the entire, uh, the entire tuple, not the topping in toppings, not the item in toppings. So let's let's fix that. Let's change that. We'll change that, put that back to topping, and then run it again. 
and we should see here making a single burger with the following toppings tomatoes onions and cheese so he does a bunch of stuff like that and it's actually pretty cool another one that he does in the book I'm just going to copy and paste it so the video is not too long here and then let's take a look at what this does so notice it says here in the comment two arguments and a dictionary so passing in two arguments first last and then user info with two asterisks and this will create a dictionary so this is pretty interesting I'm gonna remove this and then we'll take a look at this so our dictionary which is a key value pair like a, a set of key value pairs so user info will take in the item first name which will be the key and the value will be the name that we pass in here so this will be the value brought in so first name will have the be the key and the value will be whatever the first name is we pass in and then the last name and the key will be the last name we pass in and these two arguments will get put into the dictionary notice the dictionary is being returned here and let's see here our indents one two three four so these are spaces because I passed them in and then you can see here user profile so we create this is outside of the function so notice it's not indented so user profile is a variable we call the function we pass in first name vent surf and then um, we can also pass in uh, key value pairs an arbitrary number here so location UCLA and field computer science so what we should see is a dictionary a dictionary that has a first name a last name a location and a field so it should have four items four key value pairs in that user profile let's take a look I'll do a control B and you can see location UCLA field computer science first name vent last name surf so there it is now it's not in the order I would have expected it to be in but that's okay it's it's a it's a set here right a dictionary of key value pairs in kind of an unordered um, uh, list or in an unordered sequence okay so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to that um, burger function so let's see here if I can grab that burger function and so we've got the burger function here I'm gonna grab this copy and paste so we've got a function here called make burgers and it just prints out the toppings okay so that's it I'm not gonna call it here so there's the function make burgers and then I could maybe do another function here I'll put another function called what is it uh, pet info okay copy and paste so there's another function called pet info and this is from a previous video okay and this one takes in this one takes in an arbitrary number of toppings and this one takes in the type and the name of the pet so I've got two functions here what I could do is is I could save this file and I could save it as let's say my functions dot py here so my functions dot py and I'll save it in that folder okay now I'll create a new file called file save as or I'll open the file let's see here chapter 8 again so now I opened up the file chapter 8 so now I have two files in that folder my functions dot py and chapter 8 dot py now they're both in the same folder so what you can do with functions is you can import them as modules into your code so to do that what we have to do is use the import keyword so we use the import statement at the top and then we just name what it is we want to import so we could import my functions so I'll just do that I will import my functions and let's see here and now that I have it imported I can then use it in my current file so I'm importing my functions which is in a completely separate file are the functions in this file called myfunctions.py and you can see there's a function make burgers and there's a function pet info 
So now all I have to do is say my functions, my functions dot make burgers and then I can make the burger. I could say, all right, I need it with um, mushrooms, onions, and cheese. All right, so let's see if that works. And I'll just do a control B and you can see there it is, Mushroom, mushrooms, onions, and cheese. So I was able to notice it prints the toppings, which is in a tuple. And so I should see the toppings get it printed, and I do. So in a completely separate file, I can import the my functions, basically import this whole file, which imports these functions. And then I can just use them as I want. So if I wanted to use the other one, I'll just copy this, say copy and paste. And this time I'll say, pet info and I'll say I have a, a bird and the bird's name is I don't know Sam or something like that and control B and you can see mushroom onions and cheese there's my my toppings being um, printed out and then it says I have a bird my bird's name is Sam which is this function right here pet info type and name and it's supposed to print those out so that's importing a function so that allows you to maybe make a separate file to hold all your functions and then in your current program you can just import them and you can import them in different ways you can import a single function by saying something like this from my functions import pet underscore info and now I'll have to comment this out because I didn't import that so from my functions import pet info and now I should be able to use the uh, the pet info function and I can I can just call it just like this from my functions import pet info and we'll try it control B and there it is I have a bird my bird's name is San so that's importing the function directly as the name of the function from my functions import pet info and then another way you can do it is you could say from my functions okay import pet info as PI which is short for pet info so from my functions import pet info as PI now all I have to do is say PI and call it just like that. So I could do like shortening of the function name to make to simplify it. So let's try that out. Uh, control B and you can see it still works. Let's see here. Um, we'll copy that and we'll say import make burgers as MB. Now I could just say MB with, I don't know, whatever I want on it. Um, lettuce and mayo. And control B. Oops. And it says invalid syntax. So there we go. I lost the F there. F. Now it should work. Control B, and there it is, lettuce and mayo. So I'm calling the function here with a shortened name here, MB, because I said from my functions, which is this file right here. Notice not the .py, just the name of the file, not the file extension. And then from my functions, import the function that I want to import from that file, and then as MB. And now if I want to call that function, I just use MB. So those are the last few things that are covered in the chapter. He also talks, uh, there's an important part about styling functions, which is pretty important. But those are the basics from that chapter, chapter eight on functions.